Congregation will please rise. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard that he had done this sign. But the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Palm Sunday is written in the 32nd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining bond or free. Then he will say, where are their gods, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering?" Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that that I, even I, am he. There is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. This is the word of the Lord. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant. The epistle reading, the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on the cross. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Then the whole company of them arose and brought Jesus before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged in Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. 
So he questioned him at some length, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. And Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. Now Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus. But they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder for whom they asked. But he delivered Jesus over to their will. And as they led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea, he was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our confession of faith is the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of Jesus, amen. And they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. It is the great procession. The king comes into his city and the people welcome him with joy. They sing his praise. They plead his mercy. The word Hosanna literally means save us. The thing is, Jesus doesn't need a parade. He doesn't need a crowd to tell him who he is. He doesn't need anyone there in Jerusalem to tell him about the work that he needs to do. Jesus is fully aware of all of these things on his own. He has told his disciples on more than one occasion why they are going to Jerusalem, why he is entering into his city. And in many cases, what the disciples think or what they assume is going to happen is wrong. For many people, the coming of the Messiah, the king of the Jews, meant a battle a war to be fought, by the, literally taking up swords and fighting against the Romans and driving out the Romans and establishing a kingdom for Israel, just as, just as David had done a thousand years before. But Jesus comes as the true king, but for a much different purpose. To fight, not against Pilate, not against the Romans, but to fight against the devil. To fight against death. To, to fight against all of the powers of darkness and wickedness in the world. And to fight, not by taking up a sword, but by dying. By giving his own life by offering up his own body to be beaten, to be whipped, to be crucified, to be killed. And so the procession that we remember on Palm Sunday is not really for Jesus' benefit. Just like everything that happens during Holy Week is not really for Jesus' benefit, it is for us. It is for our good, it is for our forgiveness, it is for our salvation, it is for Jesus to rescue us from sin and death and the power of the devil. And so also this procession. Not that Jesus needs us to tell him who he is, but for us. That we would learn who Jesus is and why he has come into Jerusalem to suffer and die. That we would recognize who Jesus is and place our faith, our trust, and our hope in him. Not only to know that he is the, the Savior, but to believe with all our heart that he is our Savior. And so Palm Sunday is about joining in. About joining in the singing, the rejoicing, the confessing, the praying, it's one of the more fascinating aspects of this particular gospel lesson is that the, the song that they sing, 
Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, is a song that the people of God had been singing for a thousand years. It was the Psalms, after all, the songs of the people, a song that would have been very familiar to the people, a prophecy of sorts, waiting for the coming of the king. Now in Jesus it is fulfilled, and the people sing rightly as the king enters into his city. It is a song that we also sing. If you uh, pay close attention a little bit later this morning, it is a song that we sing just before we come to Holy Communion. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We join in with the crowds. We join in with the children singing the praise of God. We join in the procession. Not to Jesus' suffering and death, which he accomplished once for all, but to the altar to receive the gift of his body and blood that he provides for us in his holy sacrament. We also sing holy, holy, holy. It's what they call today a mashup, two different songs put together. The one from Palm Sunday, the other one, holy, 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 from the book of Isaiah, the song of the angels. When Isaiah witnessed a a vision of heaven, he heard the angels singing this song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The angels are singing in heaven, and again, we join in. We add our voices to theirs. We add our praise and our thanksgiving to God, to theirs. It's like the the song is going on eternally, forever. The, The people of God, the angels of God, all the company of heaven singing praise to God. And we, though we are poor, miserable sinners here on earth, God invites us to join in, to join in these eternal songs, to add our voices to theirs, to receive along with the people of all times and places, the great love and mercy and forgiveness and salvation of God for us. And in some small way, this is precisely why we do the rite of confirmation on this day. Because confirmation is about joining in about joining the procession, about joining the church, about joining the praying and the singing, about joining the faithful that come to the altar to receive the body and blood of Christ. And it is a procession, a church, particularly for the two of you, a church that you are joining that is far larger than what you see and even what you comprehend. For the church that you are joining is not just this congregation, not just this uh, assembly of saints in this particular time and place, but you are joining the eternal church, the universal church, the heavenly church, as we, uh, as we sing in the liturgy, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, that is, all those in heaven who are with Christ, all those on earth who trust in him, all those who have gone before us in the faith, all those who will come after us and confess that same faith, at this altar, all of them joined together, one holy body of Christ. 
one people for whom Christ died once for all. One people whose sins are forgiven, who are called to be saints, called to be the holy people of God. One people who confess the faith. And I know that we, I I joke about this a little bit. We have this conversation every year about why can't we just do the, why can't we just do the confirmation in private? without a huge crowd of people watching and, uh, and, and paying attention to us and making us the center of attention. And it is again for this very reason, that you are not alone, that Christ has not died for you alone, but more importantly, that you do not confess the faith alone. You do not stand alone before God. You do not stand alone before the world but you stand with all of your brothers and sisters in Christ. You stand with all of those who have gone before you in the faith. You stand with all of those who have stood before this altar and made the same confession of faith, that I believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You stand with all of those who have come to this altar to receive the body and blood of Christ. You stand with all of those in heaven, the angels and the archangels, singing the praise of God. With the martyrs in white robes, those who have gone before us in the faith and are in the presence of God. You stand with an uncountable multitude of people, singing the praise of God, confessing faith in him, receiving his gifts, hearing his word, partaking of his salvation. You join in. You add your voice of singing, your voice of prayer. You join in in hearing the word of God with the church. You join in with all the faithful receiving Christ in the sacrament. You join in with all those who are bound for heaven, redeemed in Christ, waiting with eager anticipation for his coming again, for the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. You are not alone. All of the company of heaven the saints and angels, the faithful of all times and places in Christ are here with you. May each of us find comfort and hope in this knowledge, in this truth. May all of us share together in that confession of faith that we believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we confess the God who has created us, who has redeemed us by his blood, who has sanctified us and given to us the gift of faith. May we join together in singing the praise and the thanks of God. May we join the eternal procession, singing Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
The confirmands will please rise. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. You confirmands have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith, according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 10, Everyone who confesses me before men, I also will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. I therefore invite you to lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Dylan and Keaton, do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God has given you in holy baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, and Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life of the Do you hold all of the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures, as you have learned it to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? Do you intend faithfully to attend the services of God's house, to hear the word of God and to receive the Lord's Supper? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even unto death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and with the gifts God has given you? The whole church rejoices with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dylan, please come forward. We have the parents uh, join the confirmand uh, up front. We also ask uh, all the sponsors to just stand in place where you are uh, for Dylan. Thank you. Dylan Matthew Dannenberg, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, Strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Your verse from the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go.
Caitlin? Caitlin James Stephen Wandro. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Your verse, the prayer of King David from Psalm 19. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Dylan and Keaton again. Dylan and Keaton, I now acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, Trinity Lutheran Church. We invite you to receive the Lord's Supper to participate with us in all of the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enabling them with the heart to believe and with the tongue to confess his saving name. Grant that they may bring forth the fruits of faith and continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united all your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in, in us the gift of your Holy Spirit. May we live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to our Savior. Deliver us from the power of the devil. Preserve us from false and dangerous doctrines. May we remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By your holy supper, strengthen us to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable us to find joy and comfort only in him, learning to love you and our neighbor to bear our cross with patience and joy unto the day of the resurrection of the body to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your goodness. We bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of your people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us. Enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are given to your service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord O Lord Jesus Christ, for our sakes, you humbled yourself and took upon yourself the form of a servant. We implore you to govern us by your Holy Spirit. May we never be offended at your humility, but heartily believe that by your obedience, even unto the death of the cross, you have redeemed us from the wrath of God and from eternal death. Keep us steadfast in such faith and in Christ-like humility that we may be exalted with you and be made partakers of your glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty and gracious God, Lord of the Church, you have commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into the harvest field. Bestow upon us true teachers and ministers of your word. Grant that your true gospel may be freely and boldly proclaimed here and in every place. Mercifully remember all those that you have created, even the enemies of the church, and grant them repentance unto life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, you continually bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance what is needed for the support of our lives. Grant us favorable weather and bless our labors, that the increase of plants and animals upon the earth may be harvested for the benefit of your people. Have mercy upon all those who are affected by floodwaters. According to your mercy, preserve the lives and livelihoods of your people. Remind us always of your blessings. Enable us to return to you our praise and thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, look down from heaven. Behold, visit, and relieve all of your servants who are sick or suffering. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy. Give them comfort and confidence in you. Defend them from every danger to body and soul. Keep them in peace and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty and most merciful God, you bring us through suffering and death with our Lord Jesus Christ to enter with him into glory. We pray for the family of Elroy Schoenbeck, who has been laid to rest. Grant us grace at all times to acknowledge and accept your holy and gracious will, to remain in the true faith, and to find peace and joy in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let 
us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life might arise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Good morning uh, again. Welcome to all of you, uh, especially those of you who are guests or visitors with us today uh, as we uh, celebrate our Lord's entry into Jerusalem and also as we welcome uh, Dylan and Keaton uh, as confirmed members of our congregation. Um, so they will be joining me in the back of church uh, to greet you, so please take the opportunity uh, to congratulate them uh, on your way out uh, this morning. Uh, as always, take a look at the bulletin. There's a lot of announcements uh, in there, uh, including a, a few more details about who our confirmands are and where they come from. Um, the, uh, the most important announcement uh, today, as we have begun Holy Week, uh, is the rest of our schedule for this week. Um, Monday, Thursday service with Holy Communion, Thursday night at 7, uh, Good Friday service, uh, uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock, uh, and then a week from today, Easter Sunday, uh, sunrise service at 7, uh, Easter breakfast over in the school gym at 8, uh, Sunday school at 9, uh, and then our main service uh, at 10 o'clock uh, on Easter Sunday. Uh, I've been reminding people of this, that uh, on Easter, uh, our 7 and 10 o'clock services are not the same. Uh, they are two different services. In fact, it's more accurate to say that they are two halves uh, of a single service. So, uh, so please do, uh, if you are able, join us uh, for our entire uh, morning, our entire celebration on Easter Sunday. Uh, I also have a note. Um, we also have our confirmation reunion dinner this evening. Uh, any of those of you who are confirmed at Trinity uh, in a year ending in four or nine, that is multiples of five, uh, we have the reunion dinner tonight. Uh, I especially need to announce that uh, it's possible that some of the invitations went out with the wrong time. Uh, the dinner tonight is at five o'clock. So if you are attending the dinner or if you know anyone else who is, uh, please do make sure that, uh, that they are aware of the right time. The dinner is at 5 uh, this evening, and our apologies to anyone who got, uh, got an invitation or, or got the wrong information somewhere along the way. So, again, that's 5 o'clock this evening, and uh, Dylan and Keaton uh, are welcome uh, at that dinner as well. It's your zeroth anniversary, I guess. Um, are there any other announcements this morning? Have a good week.